Does Rise of Skywalker actually suck? Well, sort of, but not really. Confronting fear, it's the destiny of a Jedi. This is Andrew Reviews, remember I wouldn't lie to you except for maybe this once. Does the rise of Skywalker Star Wars actually suck? Maybe, but not really. I understand it's a very confusing statement, but bear with me. Rise of Skywalker has received very mixed reviews. Google reviewers have given it 3.6 out of 5, while Rotten Tomatoes 55 from critics as opposed to 86 from the viewers, while Metacritic is right around 50. I'm here to tell you simultaneously that it does suck a little bit, and also, especially compared to the more recent Star Wars movies, it also does not suck at all. Here's why. As a warning, there might be some spoilers. I'm not exactly sure what's considered a spoiler these days, so I'm just going to say it right now. Spoilers! Now here's why some of it does suck. At the beginning we get several scenes with Leia and Rey, that's the late Carrie Fisher, so it's almost like Rey is talking to a pre-recorded set of lines. Now it seemed pretty obvious to me and the other people that I saw the movie with that they had these pre-written or pre-recorded lines from Carrie Fisher and they sort of had to write the other dialogue around them. So it seems like Ray could have pretty much said anything there and they just had to forcibly make it fit somehow and it didn't really work. At this point the movie was looking pretty bleak in my eyes for a lot of the same reasons people didn't like the other movies like Rogue One. The unpalatable characters that command the rebel fleets going over the planning and the underground plotting that they were doing, it was a lot of the same tired stuff we saw and didn't like in the other movies. But from there, where it could have gone down the same road that people probably wouldn't have liked, it didn't and it actually stopped sucking right then and there. It was like they need to fit in so many different characters. Finn, Poe, Chewie, all the cameos that I don't want to ruin for you that are actually pretty good, that they didn't actually have time to put in all the annoying scenes with bad acting that ruined or at least damaged the other movies. Now what do I mean by that? People like Oscar Isaac playing Poe. Now in this one, unlike Rogue One, he didn't have time to be whiny and complainy and going after his love. He was just there to play his role. Having said that, John Boyega, of course, as Finn, was quite good in this movie. Check him out at Hot Ones if you haven't seen that one. And most of all, everyone from Star Wars nerds to casual Star Wars fans need to thank Adam Driver for being such a damn good actor because he really was the best part about this movie. They actually managed to take some of what were the bad parts from The Last Jedi and Rogue One and turn them into something that worked a lot better and was a lot more fun. The cameos were better and more interestingly placed. The droids were more entertaining and interesting. Even the random aliens who have one lines were way funnier. And the action just seemed to flow better than the previous movies. A good example of that is the scenes where Kylo Ren and Rey, uh, I guess, remote viewed each other. I don't know what the exact wording is for that. Where they talk to each other in using the force from different sides of the galaxy. Those were done a lot better in this movie. It didn't seem as random. It didn't seem like they don't know what even they were doing there. Those scenes actually worked and they were well acted and made a lot more sense. And overall just fit better in this movie style and plotline than they did in the previous one. Now from my point of view, I came into this movie with pretty low expectations. I didn't really like Rogue One at all, I was meh on The Last Jedi, but I did like Solo, so I was kind of iffy on what to expect here. But I think this one is better than all three and probably the best of the new generation of Star Wars movies. Now I'm not going to lie, at the beginning of the movie, like I said, I was like, this is kind of crappy. It's probably going to be like somewhere like a low six. But by the end of the movie, my opinion had completely changed. It was two hours and 20 minutes, and I'm finishing it off with a score of 7.9. No rookie scores here, of course. Like I said, the beginning could have been better. I didn't like the ending, actually. I don't like the final direction they took the movie in. Because with what happened, they sort of changed what the focus is of all the nine movies. They're like, this is who it's focused around. This is the subject it's actually focused around. So I didn't actually like that. So that's why I can't give it a higher score. But great acting in this one, especially from Finn and Kylo Ren. Better stuff from the smaller parts, like Poe. Better parts in the rest of the movie from Rey when she's not talking to CGI Carrie Fisher. 
great cameos, some that you may expect, some that you may not expect, and some really random stuff that you probably won't expect. Maybe you won't actually like it, but the droids were better and more intricate. They, they didn't have as much ridiculous dialogue in this one, but when they did, it was still funny. And then the random creatures they had, there is like a character that was repairing C-3PO. He was really funny, got a lot of laughs. And then there were just random creatures, aliens from the Star Wars universe that pop up, and maybe they have one or two lines, but when they do, they're actually pretty damn funny and made everybody in the theater laugh, especially uh, an idiot like me. <laughs> So Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, I wouldn't agree with the critics, I wouldn't agree with the people who are saying it's bad, I think it's the best one of the new set of the series, I'm giving it a 7.9 out of 10, that's how Andrew reviews.